In this episode, I get stuck into the caving work and you'll see my daily routine to protect my poor fingers. Here's caving that's finished. I'm just getting close there so you can see. It was a daily routine before starting the sanding work each day to sit down with a box of heavy duty elastoplast plus strapping tape and wrap up my thumbs and fingers in order to protect them from literally splitting open and losing my fingernails. It's all part of finding ways to do what's necessary in order to progress towards the bigger picture of the end result. In addition to sanding the coving, I also wanted to get more paint under the angled hull floors and so needed to sand and prepare all of these. Quite a lengthy process sanding all of the coving really was finger breaking. Otherwise it wasn't hard work though. And like any proper boat painting work, all of the cleanup and preparation must be done. And so finally, after all of the preparation work, I get to paint. Ha!
So here's what all of the talk about the coving is all about. Um, here's coving that's finished. I'm just getting close there so you can see. But you can see that it's a nice smooth rounded joint where the hull floor meets the plating. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can see that. So that's everywhere now up to the engine bay. It's on every piece of um, wherever there's a joint, the coving is there. And the purpose of that is that not, there's not a molecule of water or even air that can get into the space between the where two bits of steel have been joined. So the benefit of that, of course, is there can be no corrosion, no rust. Um, and this is why I made it my decision to go ahead and do all that. It's, a, it's actually a heck of a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but the, the point is, the work doing it now compared to having a problem later that you have to pull furniture out and, and start cutting steel and welding new pieces in that have been corroded, you can just imagine like the, the inconvenience. Um, here's how it was finished up after all the clean up and the, and the painting. So that's what it, there's an example of what it would look like normally. And this is how most people who have steel boats built or build their boats, build their steel boats, this is how they normally leave it. They just do their best to poke as much paint underneath uh, where two bits of steel are joined. But um, you just cannot prevent moisture and air getting under between and so to go to all that trouble of doing the coving right throughout the whole boat, um, and as I say, up at the moment, it's up to the engine here, as you can see, but um, it's absolutely worth it, in my opinion, absolutely worth it. Again, this is what it looks like without, and um, I, I know that the, the work that it's required for me to get things done um, so far is been a lot of work, but absolutely would pale in comparison to if you had a corros corrosive problem that you had to try and deal with once all the furniture was built in and you know you're living on the boat for example well update time Whew. the last two months have been pretty damn hectic and um, didn't go to plan exactly surprise surprise so at the end of may i was asked to go back to work Yet again, I was asked to go back for one to two weeks, and um, five weeks later, I got back home. So, wasn't so happy about it. I wasn't um, so happy because basically I just wanted to be here. Anyhow, that's the way it goes, and um, it's behind me. And of course, the money is great to have in the account in the kitty. Yeah, we're close to the end of June 2018, and. The last two months have been busy, busy, busy as with, as I say, five weeks of work. Now, here I am, that's the update, and basically next week I will be moving into the boat. So it's been on my mind quite a lot about how all of this is actually going to work. And I think pretty much as of last night, this morning, I, I, um, was able to put the puzzle together a bit and see how this is going to work with me coming here. So the next big thing on my plate ahead is this weekend, I'm moving all the main gear out of the 
have where I'm living and into a storage room. I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff, as I said, selling stuff. So the storage room is quite small and um, I've got to bring loads here. Yeah, I've got a lot to do. <laughs> so I'm here today and, and, I'll, sh and I'll get some more uh, work done. From where I'm sitting to the engine bay there, I need to just light sand the cove in to give it a rough surface to put a second cove on it. It's all done from me forward. Um, so actually I'm, I'm ready to put on the polyurethane white coat uh, all there. Regardless, I am feeling like as of this morning, um, yeah, this is, it's going to work. I was a bit worried. Um, and it's going to be roughing it, camping. You know, it's a big thing going from, I'm live, I'm, where I've been living, it's quite luxurious actually. Regatta apartments right on the lake there and great view and really modern and um, comfortable. And um, I'm going to be basically camping in the boat here while I'm working on it, but I just cannot think of a better arrangement to be able to focus and be interruption free than to actually be here away from all the comforts, away from all sorts of things that go on, you know, normal things that go on living in a home, to be here out of sight and away from did that finish? No. Yeah, so just finishing up saying to be here out of sight and away from all sort of distractions, not that I really had many, but all this thing, to be here and just be focused and wake up and go straight to it. So let's see. Fingers crossed. Join me next week where I talk about the subject of sacrifice. You will see some of the inspirational boat builders and boat owners and beautiful people of all walks of life giving up a lot in order to achieve their boat dreams and goals. I've had a pretty damn hectic week of moving out of where I was living. I've done the absolutely crazy thing of deciding to move out of that place and onto the boat.